Well, it's finally here. It is a wild card weekend, and we kick off the first of two triple headers because of the expanded playoff format tomorrow, Saturday, January the 9th at 1.05 p.m. on CBS when the 11-5 Colts travel to the 13-3 Buffalo Bills. So the Bills get to host a playoff game for the first time probably since I've been born. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting game. I like the way these two teams match up. Colts have a nice defense. Bills, they have a nice overpowering offense that can get the job done with Josh Allen's explosive arm and great talent running the football. Uh, Indianapolis, they are a, a very uh, solid team. I, I wouldn't say that they're very particularly great in any one area. Uh, I don't think that they have enough to get over this hump. I don't think Phillip Rivers is that kind of guy in the playoffs. Uh, he hasn't been for a very long time, so I'm going to go with Josh Allen of the Bills to advance to the divisional round. Then we have the 10-6 and 6 Rams at the 12-4 and 4 Seahawks at 440 on Fox. And the Rams and the Seahawks met in the regular season twice, obviously. They split their series. And Seattle, uh, I, I believe, to be the better team. Uh, Jared Goff coming off that injury uh, where John Walford had to step in and in, uh, in, in relief of him last week and barely edged out the Cardinals in that win. So it's going to be a very interesting game. Uh, it, it's really all going to rely on if Jared Goff is healthy enough with that hand to be able to lead this squad to where they want to go. Uh, obviously this team isn't as talented as the one that went to the Super Bowl a few years ago, but they're still a very talented football team, don't get me wrong. And Seattle, on the other hand, uh, they have a lot of question marks uh, offensively and, and defensively obviously that we have seen crop up time and time again through the regular season the defense can't stop a nosebleed and when Russ is shut down it's very apparent that they can't do anything uh, and, and then it becomes really really a, a really bad time to be a Seahawk fan I guess like watching that team when they get in their slump is just not good and yeah they've, they've won these close games and that's strictly due to the magic of Russell Wilson. But they're going to need a lot more out of the entire team now than ever. It, not necessarily even for this game because they've proven they can beat the Rams in one of those close scoring games. It got out of hand at the end, but you know what I mean. And uh, Seattle's going to need their defense to step up in a big way if they advance. Uh, that They are going to have a tough task ahead of them no matter who they play next week if they win. Uh, which I project they will do. So they are probably going to squeak by this game, and then they're going to have a tough road ahead of them if they want to get back to the Super Bowl. Uh, a lot of these teams in the playoffs are very, very good. And, of course, at some point, the road of the Super Bowl runs through Green Bay. So they're going to have to go up there eventually and play them. But I like the Seahawks in this game. Then, at 8.15, the 11-5 Buccaneers go to the 7-9 Washington football team, uh, who, frankly, don't deserve to be in the playoffs after only winning seven games. Uh, that just goes without saying. And the fact that they were gifted a playoff berth by Doug Peterson and the Eagles after they threw a football game, which is just the lowest form of trash and classlessness that I can think of. So, congratulations, Washington. You got gifted a playoff berth by a division rival who allowed you to celebrate the winning of a division on their home field, which in any other division, in any other sport, in any other walk of life would not be acceptable. You played cowards, you got into the playoffs in a cowardly manner, and you will be beaten like cowardly dogs, frankly. Uh, Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have an axe to grind. Uh, Tom Brady's last action in the playoffs last year was on Wild Card Weekend. It's his first time entering the playoffs as a Wild Card team, and he is going to look to exact some revenge. The last pass he threw in the playoffs was a pick six. So he's going to come out and he's going to throw many sixes, but to his own team, to Antonio Brown, to uh, Chris Godwin, to Mike Evans, to Rob Gronkowski, to whoever and whomever he chooses to throw the ball to. That Tom Brady is going to have a game for the ages, I predict. Uh, Washington not going to be able to generate enough pass rush to get Tom Brady off of his game. Uh, he's the greatest quarterback of all time statistically for a reason. And a, a, a 7-9 and nine football team that got swept by the 6-10 and 10 New York Giants is not going to beat Tampa Bay. 
Uh, so I'm going with the Buccaneers. Then sa Sunday, January 10th, on ESPN, ESPN Plus, and Freeform at 1.05 p.m., the 11-5 Ravens will take on the 11-5 Titans. So this game, interesting matchup. We saw it in the playoffs last year when Derrick Henry turned Earl Thomas into his personal protector, his lead blocker. Um, Derrick Henry is going to do Derrick Henry things. That's a grown-ass man, and <laughs> not many people on the face of this planet can straight up one-on-one -on -one tackle that guy. And Ryan Tannehill quietly has had one of the best seasons of any quarterback uh, that you can really go and chart. Uh, it hasn't been exactly flashy or, or, or wowing, but with A.J. Brown and, and Derrick Henry, he's proved that he can be one of the very best quarterbacks in this league. And I always knew he could be, even back when he was with Miami. I'm sure I echoed those sentiments years ago on my predictions. So, I mean, just go back and, and try to try to find that proof for yourself. Uh, the Titans are going to win this game. Defensively, they need a lot of help. Uh, they cannot continue to play the same brand of defensive football that they have been and expect to go to the Super Bowl, especially with some of the high-powered teams that are out there, Kansas City, Buffalo, so they're going to need a full team effort to win this game, and I, I do think that they will get that. So I'm going with Tennessee. And then at 440, something I never thought I'd say in my life, on CBS and Nickelodeon, yes, Nickelodeon is hosting an NFL football game. The 8-8 eight and eight Bears will take on the 12-4 and four Saints in the Superdome. This game... Shouldn't be close. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky is not a not a quarterback that can win these kinds of big games, and Drew Brees is proven to be able to do that. We all know what I think of New Orleans, so it's not going to come as a surprise to many people that I'm probably not going to pick them next week. Uh, but I, I will pick them this week because you know it's the wild card weekend. You got to weed out the horrible teams from the not so horrible teams. So I'm picking New Orleans. Then, to close out Wild Card Weekend on NBC, the 11-5 Browns will take on the 12-4 Steelers for the second consecutive week. So, they split the season series. The Browns only won in Week 17 uh, in a close game, mind you, because the Steelers had arrested Ben Roethlisberger. This game means so much to Cleveland. They cannot afford to lose, but unfortunately, they're going to be without Kevin Stefanski. They're going to be without a, a few of their players due to due to the uh, you know the 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 COVID nineteen protocols uh, that are going to keep some of their guys out in the biggest game in this franchise's history. I mean that that might be over overselling it a little, but in the past two times they've been in the postseason, they've been eliminated by Pittsburgh. Don't you think that as an organization, your goal is to not just win a playoff game? But to go to Heinz Field and to beat your division rival, who had just gotten done whipping you like a dog in the regular season once, and then nearly beating you while resting their starting quarterback the second time. The Browns need this win in a bad way. The Steelers, I've said all season, are overrated. They have four losses after starting 11-0. They are one for their last three, including a loss to the Washington football team and the Cincinnati Bengals. This team is not serious in the playoffs. If they go to Buffalo, they will be beaten. If they go to Kansas City, they will be destroyed. The Pittsburgh Steelers are a necessary stepping stone for Cleveland. If they can't get past the Steelers, then Cleveland has no business being in the playoffs. They have struggled all season long. They cannot afford to stumble now. Baker Mayfield must be the guy. And I don't want to make excuses for the Browns anymore because now it's in your hands. You have the chance to go to the Super Bowl. Everyone does. The remaining however many teams all equally have a chance to make the Super Bowl. And just because you're Cleveland and you've been a poverty franchise since you came back from Baltimore does not give you a pass. They need to win. They need this game. I'm picking Cleveland to go on to the next round of the playoffs. Even with, ever, uh, even with the cards stacked against them, I still like the Browns. So that'll do it for Wild Card Weekend. Enjoy the game, stay safe, have fun.
and enjoy all the football. And I'll catch everybody next week in the divisional round.